Hey, what's going on guys? Have you ever been in a situation where you walked into a title agency's office to grab a package to go to a signing and as soon as you're about to walk out the door, the title officer grabs you and say, hey, are you available for a signing on such and such a date for so-and-so? Look in your calendar real quick and you say, yes, I'm available. You head to your car and then you completely forget it you completely forget all of the signing information and all the signing details rather and um you feel embarrassed at having to call the title officer back and say hey what 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 date was that again imagine you being able to eliminate that by simply speaking into your phone with the order details and that information automatically gets imported into your calendar wouldn't that be amazing well in my notary automation course i teach this and I have the blueprint here right in front of me using a software called make.com. And um, in my course, I give this exact blueprint where you could just click on this button, click import, and this, ex this exact blueprint gets automatically imported to you. But don't worry, I'm gonna teach you how to do this step-by-step -step in this video. So you don't have to worry about that, okay? So looking at the entire scenario, I use a software called Slack. Slack is a free um, software that would allow you to import the audio. So import, uh, or rather speak the order details into your phone. Um, once it's, once the uh, order details, uh, once you speak the order details to Slack, Slack, you then have the option to download that audio. Then we transcribe that audio and then we extract the order details. We kind of uh, tweak the formatting when it comes to the time um, because an interesting thing uh, when we speak, uh, we talk about time, we could say the first, or we could say May 1st, or we could say um, May 1, 2024. So sometimes we, everyone speaks differently. Everyone says dates, dates differently, but we got to use open AI to, to figure out what we're trying to say. And then when we take all that information, we throw it into uh, go, your Google calendar or your Gmail account, and then you're all set. All right. So I'm going to show you how to do this step by step right now. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to set up your trigger. Whenever you set up, whenever you use Make, the first thing that it's looking for is a trigger. A trigger is a trigger is uh, something that'll activate this workflow. Okay, um, so in our scenario, we're using Slack. So let's open up Slack. Oops. All right. So what we're looking for in Slack is we um, want to um, watch for a private channel message. Um, again, Slack is Slack is free to use. Um, if you open this up for the first time, you're going to want to um, add your personal Slack account here. And then um, as far as the input method, uh, we got to select the list and we're looking for a private channel. So in my Slack account, I have a few channels. I created a specific channel for this and it's, it's called. Um, what did I call it here? I called it scheduling automations right in front of me. What I want to do is I'm going to limit one one event hit OK. And what we want to do is we want to just hit save and we want to test it. All right. So let's run a quick test. Whenever you whenever you add something in, you want to test it right away just to make sure that uh, everything is working great. You don't want to build this big scenario and then you have a bunch of problems. All right. So let's uh, run this module only. Great. So it was able to connect to Slack. And if we look at the little um, magnifying glass, we can kind of go in, go in and see exactly what um, it pulled out. So it just join the slack channel that's not really doing much all right so once uh once once we connect the slack channel what we have to, the first thing we need to do is we need to download the audio okay so we go here and just hit download we click on slack again and then what we're going to search for is download a file all right so we're downloading a file what it's looking for is a url private download link so whenever you use um say a message into slack it'll it'll save that message as a URL in their platform. So we wanna um, extract that. So if you click on this, all right, it automatically connects to our uh, trigger. And what we're looking for is we're looking for a URL private download. So if we go to files, URL private download is right here. Click it, boom. All right, so don't, um, that's, that's set up. And we can just rename this. I like to rename as I go so that way I don't lose track. Rename, we got to call it download audio. And we just put a little emoji here just to make it pretty. All right, let's just go to right here. That's good. Microphone. Boom. All right, so what we're going to do is we hit save. 
and let's test it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Slack and I'm going to say a message and we are going to test it. Okay. All right. Give me one second. Let's send a message. Record an audio. Hey, this is a test message to Slack. All right. Send that in. And let's run the scenario. Okay. Hit run. Boom. All right. So downloaded the audio and this is the file. Okay. Um, what we'll do in the next, in the next, uh, section is we're going to transcribe this audio. Okay. So what we're going to use is we're going to, we're going to use, um, open AI to do that. Okay. So if we go open AI and we're going to use what's called whisper, whisper is a, is a section in open AI that allows you to transcribe audio to text. Okay. So we're going to use whisper and we are going to, uh, transcribe, transcribes and audio to text. That's exactly what we need. And again, for open AI, op um, for open AI, you're going to need to create an account with open AI. It's pretty simple. Um, you just need to go to platform.openai.com. Again, I'll include all these links in the show notes, show notes. Um, once you create an open AI account, you're going to need to add some credits on there. Okay. Uh, the minimum is around $10 or so. And you know, I've been doing a lot of things with open AI for, um, for the past few months. And I haven't spent more than about $15 a month on, on, on the platform. And I've been re really heavy on just testing and, and putting things out on social media. And, and it's really, really cheap. All right. Um, it's a few pennies and it's, it also depends on the model that you use. And we'll go into that later, but if you use the older models, it's, it's less expensive than if you use some, the, the newer model. So once you get into, um, once you connect or you sign in for open a open AI account, um, it will connect to your, your Google account. Um, you just have to go into settings and go to billing. And then you want to do what you want to do is you want to add a payment method and then you want to just add to your balance. Okay. So it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. So let's go back here. Oops. Hold on. All right. So once we hear we, we're in whisper, we connected your open AI account. You, you'll notice that, uh, open it is already smart enough to know that you want to download the audio file. Okay. So we'll connect the audio, uh, file from Slack and we want to uh, select the prompt. So the prompt we want to select to say transcribe, uh, Oops, I spelled correctly. Let me just. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I want to transcribe text. I'm sorry, transcribe this word for word. Okay. Transcribe this word for word. And that's it. All right. And let's, again, let's practice. Let's rename this. Oops, wrong thing. Let's rename. And we want to call this uh, transcribe audio. Okay, let's keep on with the trends. Let's just get a little emoji. All right, let's see what's up. Is that one right there? All right, perfect. So let's test it again. All right, it should pull the audio that we just did. And if we click on the uh, magnifying glass, and we can see the text right here in the output. Want to schedule an appointment? Oh, that's the wrong one. I said pull the wrong thing. So let's run it again. Let's run the entire scenario again. I pulled one of my test scenarios, the magnifying grid. I said, all right, I need to schedule closing. No. All right, so let's see. Ah, uh, I think I know what the problem is. I need to hit save. Once you hit save, it should pull. There you go, that should work. All right, oops, they're still pulling my tests. <laughs> All right, don't you just love, don't you just love this? All right, hit save again. It's, it's pulling my tests. All right, well, all right, this is this is a live scenario. So what it's, what it's doing is pulling, it's pulling my audio clips. It looks like it pulled, I did some tests yesterday and it pulled that, okay? Let's, uh, let me try to send it. I did, I did, all right. So let's uh, see if I could, uh, there we go. Finally. All right. It's making me look bad. All right. So this is the last message that I uh, pulled. It says, Hey, 
This is a test message to Slack. That's what I just did a few minutes ago. So uh, forgive, forgive me. And you know what? This is good, good because a lot of times when you do leave a message on here, uh, it does take about five minutes or so to, to, to sync up. So it was pulling some old data. Um, but in this particular case, um, it pulled what we needed. Okay. So that's all right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to, once we have, once we have, uh, the audio transcribe, we need to pull the lead information or the, 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 not the lead information, the scheduling information from, from, um, what we what we just transcribed right we need to pull like the scheduling date the time the location um we need to pull that so that way we, we could put it in our calendar right so the first thing we need to do is we need to extract the scheduling information so we're going to use we're going to use open ai again to do that and in open ai is what we can do is we can um there's a module where you can transcribe words into structured data. So we're gonna take words and turn them into variables. Variables is uh, just a function or so that we can use and turn it into data. So that way we can um, put it in, import it into our calendar. Okay. So let's see data. Let's put in data. Transform text to structured data. It identifies information in a prompt text and returns it as a structured data. Okay, so we're transcribing our words into structure. Okay, so again, connect your open AI. The model we're going to use for this is GPT 3.5 Turbo. All right, um, GPT, GPT 3.5, 3.5 Turbo is an older model, but it's cheaper to use. Okay, then to use the latest model, which is the four, uh, four GPT four. All right. All right. Um, <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to parse this text. I already have it. So I'm just going to, to save time. I'm just going to copy it here. All right. And then I'll read it out to you. Okay. All right. So what we're saying is um, extract the order number, client, extract the order number, client name, scheduling date, scheduling time, scheduling location, and intent of the user based on this transcript. Okay. All right. Oh, I put it in the wrong place. <laughs> we have to put it in the prompt, not the text. The text we want to parse is this. We want to parse this text. Sorry about that. All right. So we, the prompt that we're using is we want to extract the, uh, the order number, client name, scheduling date, scheduling time, scheduling location, and intent of the user based on the transcript. The text that we want to parse is the text that we, uh, transcribed in the last in the last um in the last scenario so that's what we want to parse we want to parse the text that we transcribe from the audio and then the prompt that we're using is what i just mentioned okay so what we need to do now is we have to create the the structured data definitions okay so the first thing we want to do is you want to get the order number so with this we can we can't do any spaces so we say order number and the description is the order number the data type is going to be an array. Okay. Or we can use text, but we're going to use array in this. Right. Is it required? We, we, we could all say no, and we could um, tweak that later on. The next thing we want to do, the next definition we want to do is we want to have, uh, let's just minimize this so we can see it. Um, the next thing we want to do is client name. Okay. Client name and client name. Okay. The description is this a client name? And uh, are we going to say, you know, name of client, make it easier. The data type again, this is going to be an array and it's going to be a text. Okay. Next one is we have order number, client name, scheduling date. Okay. All right. So we have scheduling date. And this is a description is a scheduling date. Okay, and this is going to be text. All right, what is the next thing we need? So we have order number, client name, scheduling date. Now we need the scheduling time, okay? Not the definition, scheduling, scheduling time. Okay, all right. All right, scheduling time. Is also, oops, that's what wrong. Scheduling time is also a text. Um, one thing I didn't do, 
I, I, I just caught is we some, we want to give it some examples I want to use. So a time is let's say oh one o'clock p.m. Another example could be uh, ten o'clock a.m. Right, and let's go back to scheduling date. I'm sorry, I'm jumping around here. Scheduling date would be something like 01 01 2024. Okay, just to give it an example, what we're trying to do in the, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to help open AI identify certain data structures as far as what we're looking for. And once it see once it once it once it knows the format, it's going to know how to um, output that data for us. Okay, so that we just we just I'm um, kind of giving it throwing an alley oop to um, open AI. Okay, so we have the order, we have the order number, we have the client name, we have the scheduling date, um, scheduling time. Now we need a signing location, right? A signing location. So let's go signing location. And uh, the signing location is, uh, let's see, it's just a signing location. Um, the data type for signing location is just text again. And just to give it a little, another alley-oop, we can say an example is, I don't know, one, two, three, Main Street, uh, Brooklyn, New York. One, one, two, three, four. That's an example we can use. And the last thing we knew we need uh, after the signing location is the intent. The intent is really just a summary of what the the audio was about. So OpenAI is going to kind of give a summary of what it's about, and it, it'll, it'll help. Uh, so say if you wanted to add certain things about the signing. So if if the if the um, the, the title officer says, hey. Um, you know, that that attorney likes to do it such and such a way or, um, you know, give some certain information about the signing that you add. What it'll do is open AI will kind of give you a summary about that and it'll include it in the um, it'll include it in the calendar information and we can put it under the description. So that way you don't forget it. OK, they can say they may say funding is required or funding is not required or you have to email so and so or make sure you. Uh, you know, certain checks, you know, the information that a title officer would give you um, when they give you the signing information, say, you know, collect a check or a wire is being done or uh, make sure you drop it to this office instead of this office, like whatever information that they'll give you, you can, you can, you can say that to the message and then it'll um, open the AI. will put that as an intent, at like the intent of the, the meeting. Okay. Intent. And the description is, you know, um, a short, summary of the conversation what was the user looking for All right so it's a short summary of the conversation what was the user user being the person speaking or the the trans the transcription what was it looking for what was the intent okay and this is also text okay perfect all right so that's amazing. So I think that's all what we need here. Is it okay? And again, we want to we want to um, want to label this. So we got to label it. Let's see. Rename. We are going to call this. Hmm, let's say extract scheduling. Okay. Let's give it uh, another emoji. Because I like emojis and let's just do that. That's cool. All right. Extract scheduling data. Hit OK. Awesome. So let's save that and let's do a let's 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 do a test. OK, so in this case, I'm going to say, all right, let's go into Slack scheduling automation and let's record an audio. OK. All right, so I want to do a signing for um, Apple Fifth Avenue at 767 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10153. The order number is APPL12345. The scheduling time is um, at 3 p.m. and it's on May 15th, 2024. All right, I sent that to Slack. It's gonna take a few minutes for it to for it to register. 
Um, so let's give it a few minutes and um, so you can see it, all right? All right, let's get, let's check it out now. All right, so let's see the transcribed audio. All right, so I do a signing for Apple Fifth Avenue, 767 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10153. The order number is APPL12345. The scheduling time is at 3 p.m. and it's on May 15th, 24. Okay, so kind of messed that up, but let's see what happens, okay? Let's see what it pulled. Oops, like this. I wanna see what it pulled. All right, so the order number, APPL12345, the client name, Apple Fifth Avenue, Scheduling date, May 15th, 2024. So pick that up. Great. Scheduling time, 3 p.m. Standing location, 767 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10153. The intent is signing appointment request. Boom. How amazing is that? So it took an audio that we said in our phone. It transcribed it. It structured the data. So now that we can take this order information, client name, scheduling date, um, scheduling time, signing location, and intent, and we could throw that in our calendar. All right which is amazing, right? Cool, all right, cool stuff. All right, so next, what we wanna do is, what I mentioned earlier is what I found during my testing is that sometimes we may say, um, instead of saying um, May 15th, 2024, we may say May 15th, 2024, or May 1st, or June 3rd, all right? So a lot of times when I was getting that information, it was structuring like, uh, Google, the Google calendar was like, wait, we can't take 15 and they have a certain way you have to format it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that don't, it doesn't matter what we say or how we say the date and the day and time is that it's going to be properly structured. Okay. So I'm going to create a, another module and this time we got to do the same thing. We got to transform, we got to transform, um, let's see data. Right, we got to transform the text to a structured data, and what we what we want to do in this case is we got to we got to kind of analyze the date and time, and we we're going to make sure that that that's correct. Okay, so uh, let me just um, to save time, I'm going to copy this here. But the model we got to use in this particular case is we got to use GPT four Turbo. Four Turbo four Turbo is the latest uh, GPT model, and it's a, it's a lot smarter than the three point five. Okay. Um, so we got to use that so that way you can analyze better for us. Okay. Although the three, three, five did a, a, a better job when we said through, when we said the time, but we got to make sure that it's, it's correct. We want to double check that. Okay. So we don't want any errors. All right. So let's do this here. What we want to say is the scheduling time and date, right? So our, so the text we want to parse in this particular case is the scheduling time and scheduling date. So if we go to, uh, our, la our last prompt, the scheduling date. All right, we go to scheduling date, boom. And the scheduling time right here is boom, 3 p.m. Awesome, all right? So the prompt now we wanna do is, I'm gonna copy it just to save time. And again, if you are a member of the course, of my AI automations course, you get all of this already as a blueprint and you don't have to worry about it, all right? But here's the prompt parse the scheduling date parameter and convert it convert it to a month month day day year year date format removing first second third etc from the day if added to the transcript all right so i said basically remove if, if the person says third or second or first or anything like that in a day we're going to remove that okay and if the next thing I, I mentioned is to parse the scheduling time parameter and convert it to uh, hour, hour, month, month, military time format, removing AM and PM if added to the transcript. So a lot of time you may say 3 PM, 4 PM, 10 AM. Instead of doing that, military time covers that because then it'll be 14 o'clock or uh, uh, 16 o'clock or 1630, right? And then you automatically know at that time it's gonna be in the evening. Whereas if it says 10, 10 o'clock, we know it's in the morning, okay? Instead of 10 p.m., which would be 20, right? Yeah, 20, <laughs> I don't know military time that well, 20 o'clock, right? So it'll know that. So I have it converted to military time, so that way it eliminates a.m. or p.m. Um, in the parsing of the, of, the, of the structure. So now what we need to do is we need to just define a new variable, so the new definition of data structures here. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna copy and paste just to save time, all right? formatted data 
data uh yeah formatted scheduling date in the description is uh scheduling date formatted all right and the data type is going to be text and another example we can use is 01 01 2024 okay all right so close that parameter the next thing we need to do is we need to do the the scheduling time right oops let's close that add another definition and what we're going to do is we're going to say formatting formatted right formatted uh and this is going to format scheduling time and then we're going to say scheduling time oops let's see Scheduling time, formatted scheduling time, and the data again is going to be text. And we're just gonna add an example on oh, one o'clock. Um, oh, yeah, one on oh, one o'clock is fine. And then the next one we want to do is we want to say uh, like ten thirty, right? All right, great, awesome. All right, and then we want again we want to we want to rename this. Let's keep best practices formatted. Formatted date, time. Then we want to use an emoji, and that's gonna just be. Let's see. Hmm, let's use the clock. Perfect. Oops, we didn't do it. Let's do it again. Clock. Awesome. So I'm all about the emojis, baby. All right, so let's hit save. I may need to record another audio, but let's see if we could pull what we just did. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna have to record another audio. Okay, so let's go into Slack and let's record another audio. All right, so I have a closing for Apple Fifth Avenue, 767 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10153. The order number is APPL 9876. The signing date is May 16th, 2024 at 5 p.m. Right, I just sent it. It should take a few minutes uh, to go to Slack. Um, once you get to Slack, the way it's going to work again is going to pull in. It's going to pull in the audio. It's going to recognize that the audio um, trigger is going to uh, set, and then it's going to download that audio, transcribe the audio, extract the data from the audio. Then it's going to look at the date a second time, analyze the date, format it correctly, so that way we can put it into our Google Calendar. Okay, let's see if the audio came through. Perfect, it did. All right, boom, it downloads the audio. It's transcribing it now. Now it's extracting the audio, and now the data, now the date and time is formatted. All right, so let's look at the extracted data here, okay? All right, so again, the sign, the order number is APPL 9876. The sign in location is um, Apple Fifth Avenue. Okay, so it did kind of mess up here. It messed up where it didn't take the, it didn't take the, um, it didn't take the, it didn't, it didn't parse the, uh, what you call it, the, the signing. So what I, what it was supposed to do, it was supposed to, if you look at the, sorry, if you look at the extracted data, it's supposed to actually pull the client name, but I didn't say client name, right? So maybe that's where I messed up. So we just gotta be mindful of that. We have to say, you know, we're doing a closing for the client is Apple Fifth Avenue. We have to say that we have to kind of help help it a little bit. All right, but let's 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 just move on. And in, in our last scenario, we'll make sure we do it correctly. But let's what I was trying to do is the date. All right, so that's perfect, right? So the format is scheduling scheduling date is 5 16, 2024. And I said 5 p.m., right? So it's again uh, 17 o'clock. Perfect. Okay. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put um, put this into our Google Calendar. All right. So you can use any calendar you want, um, but in this particular example, I'm using a Google Calendar. So let's see Google Calendar. All right. And again, if you have a Google account, all you have to do is once you set this up for the first time, is you, you have to um, add your um, calendar. So let's go into Calendar, and what we want to do is we want to create an event. Okay. Once you create an event, um, the calendar ID. It's going to be the specific, uh, specific calendar that you like. Um, the event name is going to be, I'm going to just copy it here. So save date, save time. The event name is going to be the client name. All right. Client name. Right, this is collapse all the client name. Oh, 
So I will, oh, actually, no, I can do it. So the client name is going to be here. And then the order number is going to be here. All right, boom. All right, so this is where it gets fun. Okay, so what we want to do next is we want to parse the date and time. Parse date is the way we have to structure this in order to let Google Calendar know that we're putting in a specific date. Because right now, the date and time is just text format. We have to format it a specific way so that Google Calendar recognizes that this is a date that we're working with, okay? All right, so what we wanna do first is we want to, um, let's just see here, let's just take that out. Oops, sorry. Let's go, keep that using a little thing here. First thing we wanna do is parse date. Uh, we wanna use the formatted date. And then we wanna go in here and use a formatted time. Okay, so let's just close this for a second. What we're doing is we're parsing the date. We're parsing, we're putting the entire date format in here. Um, we're putting the, the formatted scheduling date and then we're gonna add a space to it. And then we're gonna put the formatting scheduling time. And then we're letting uh, Google know that it's gonna be month, month, day, day, in a year in a four format. And then we're gonna do the hours and the months. And then we wanna actually close this bracket. Perfect. And we are all set there. All right, so as far as the duration, most signing times are is about an hour, but you can change. Let me just move this aside so you can see. All right, awesome. Um, the duration is usually gonna be for an hour. Most signings are about an hour, so we'll put it in for an hour. Okay, and we'll just put it like this just to keep it clean. And let's see, let's show advanced data. And what we, what we could do is the description. So remember when I was mentioning earlier that we wanna talk about intent and, and, and different uh, things you wanna discuss or that the uh, title officer may have discussed during um, your meeting, your encounter with them. So we could put that in here, okay? So, all right, so let's just put that. Perfect. All right, so the signing is for the client name. The order number is order number. The signing location is here. The signing date, we can put the date here. Um, the formatted date, and then we can put the formatted time. And the intent, if we go back to the intent, boom, the intent. Awesome. So that way in your description, you know, in your calendar, how you have a description and if you click on it, you can kind of just take a, a, a view at that. Okay. As far as signing location, the signing location is here. Boom. The signing location. All right. So that way, you know how in the map section of your calendar, it'll put the signing location there. So that way it'll map it to where you need to go. All right. And that's it. Again, it's a Google calendar and we can, we can rename it. We can call it, uh, uh uh, input, um, add signing to calendar. All right. And again, just keep it. Yes. Add a little emoji and this is a calendar. Awesome. It okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Awesome. So we have to, we, we built out the entire scenario. Let's hit play again. Let's see if we if I have to record another audio. I do. All right. So this time we're going to do it right. Okay. All right, so let's, let's go open up my Slack and let's record the audio. My client, um, Apple Fifth Avenue, has a signing at 767 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10153. The order number is APPL 6789. It's on May 20th, 2024 at 10 a.m. Awesome. So let's send that in. And let's give it a few minutes, all right? So it's gonna take a few minutes before the um, audio is, before Slack, or sorry, before Make recognizes that there's a, a trigger event. And we should be able to try it now. Should, should be available, awesome. All right, so it recognized that there's an audio. And this one, it downloaded the audio. Next, it transcribed the audio. My client, um, <laughs> you record my, um, Apple Fifth Avenue has a signing at 767 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10153. The order number is APPL6789. It's on May 20th, 2024, 10 a.m. Okay, so extracted that information. 
oops, we need to look at the magnifier, order number. Um, it kind of messed up the order number. Let's see how it turns out. I'm actually happy that happened. The client name, Apple Fifth Avenue. Schedule and date, May 20th, 2024. Schedule and time is 10 a.m. And it's in the signing location. And the intent is schedule signing for client Apple Fifth Avenue. All right, perfect. Now, if we look at the formatted date, it should have formatted it correctly. Awesome. 5-20-2024, 10 a.m. 10 o'clock. It didn't even say 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. It says 10 a.m. 10. Perfect. So now, in the calendar, it imported everything into the calendar. But well, let's look at the calendar. So what date is this again? It's on... Uh, May 20th at 10 a.m. So let's open up my calendar and let's go to May 20th. May 20th, 10 a.m. Here it is right here. Awesome. Right. So it says signing for Apple Fifth Avenue order APPL six. I mean, it's not perfect, but I mean, it, it's better. You set it on your phone uh, on the go. All right. You could always clean this up. The signing, the signing location, 767 uh, six, Fifth Avenue. The signing date is five. 20, 23, and 4 at 10 a.m. And they put it at the correct 10 a.m. slot. Scheduling, this, the intent is to schedule a signing for um, your client, Apple Fifth Avenue. How awesome is that? And in the, the subject, it says Apple Fifth Avenue. The order number is APPL 6789. All right, so we did it, guys. All right, we were able to um, put a message on your Slack channel, transcribe the audio, and it automatically went right into your calendar. Now that's automation, guys. That's automation. You'll give it up for yourself if you made it for this. If you made it this far in this video, then you're off to a good start. All right. So my the intention of this is to make sure that all of my notary peeps, we start automating stuff, and because we, we are on the road a lot, so we don't have a time to always be in front of a computer all the time to enter things that we get that get thrown at us. So it's best that if we have tools like this that we can just say it real quick, five minutes, and we we're confident that it's going to go into our calendar that we can check later. Good to go. All right, because I hear a lot of times from a lot of title agencies and title officers that notaries don't show up. I think a lot of times the reason notaries don't show up is because they're not organized. They don't have things like this in place, systems like this in place in order to make sure that um, they don't miss opportunities. All right. All right. So this video was long enough. If you not on the course, make sure you click on the link below. I'm going to be doing videos like this as automations and different um different tools come out i'm going to be doing things like this so that it's catered towards our space the notary space because i'm trying to make us better all right till next time peace